and gentlemen, welcome back to Insomnia 54 for our final tournament here. It is the grand final of the Halo 2 Anniversary Tournament. I am excited, long time Halo fan myself, but I won't waste any of your time. We've got a great match set up for you guys here today. Starting with the team that will be on my left. They've come across the channel to play on our stage today. Fought their way up through the lower bracket, defeating the seed number two team. Ladies and gentlemen, Team Exertus! Good luck, guys. Head down to your seats. And, ladies and gentlemen, on the right-hand side, from here, in good old Blighty, it is going to be Xenex Esports! Good luck, guys. And guiding you through these wonderful series of games are going to be are going to be your casters. It is going to be Wonder Boy and AZ. Thank you so much, Tetcher. Thank you for joining us here at Insomnia 54. My name is Wonder Boy. I'm joined by the beautiful bearded AZ, and we are here to bring you the final of the Halo 2 Anniversary Championships here at Insomnia 54. We have Xenex, of course, going up against the French team Exertus. We've been waiting for this literally all day, but finally, after a long wait, we can play some Halo. Absolutely, and of course, it, we wouldn't be doing our jobs if we weren't talking about the French team exerters. Came all the way from France to play in this tournament, and they've shocked everyone. They took down Epsilon earlier on in the tournament, and what a fairy tale story it's been for them. It has been. I mean, they've been here before. They're no strangers to, you know, of course, playing this team before. Um, they had a great series last night against uh, Epsilon, and we've got some great players. We've got some you know, good people to talk about. Botanist, for example, you know, showing us how to play Sank. We have Cinder, who's always going to be on stream for us. And of course, yeah. And even, even Renox. Renox's performances on Warlord with the shotgun and camouflage has gives us more than enough to look at. Yeah, Renox and Hitterborg for the Exertus team have been fantastic. Unfortunately, we only have Botanist and Cinder's point of view, but we're not too, uh, we're not too fussy about that because they're still pretty good players. And then on the Zenix side, we have Septic and Fusion on stream for you. And Xenex this weekend have looked the real deal. They've literally been one of, if not deserved winners uh, of this event. But of course, you know, the French are here to stay. They're here to make the mark. And they're not going to go down easy. So game number one is going to be capture the flag on Warlord. Very fast paced game type. We've seen two Foxy from Xenex be an absolute monster on this game this weekend. We've also seen on the Exerter side, Renox go off. So it's going to be a battle between those two players, I believe, in this game. Again, it's going to be a fast-paced game. Who's going to win? Who, who do you think? What's, what are your predictions? The people are always going to go for the obvious. Um, but I, you know, I, I, I believe in the fairy tale. I'm looking forward to seeing the French dominate. I mean, they've gotten this far. Don't they want to go all the way? Absolutely. And it would be a Cinderella story for Team Exertus. So game number one is about to get underway. I want to start things off, if we can, with Botanus from Team Exertus. Now we've noticed that a lot of people tend to try and get top middle straight away. Botanus obviously did the right thing here, putting shots across map. He's not going to go for the camouflage, but he's going to play the portal game. He's going to look back and forth. He's sitting on green. Of course, we all know if you get someone on green base, then you have you also have like sight lines upon the spawns of both portals. That's the key factor in this game. And straight off the back for Team Xanax is this man, Septic, with the camouflage. Great play by him to get the camouflage straight off the bat. Takes down Botanus with the help of Riots. It's going to be Septic going up against, I believe this is Hitterball below him. In the end, I believe it was Cinder actually who goes down. Septic still has that camouflage. Zenex are moving a flag early on. I believe it's Riot's running the flag. And this could be a very early flag up here for Team Xenex. No, we, we can't stress how much and how important camouflage is in this game type. Even if it's Slayer, Bomb, or in this case, Flag, it is imperative to grab camouflage. It gives you so many options. It basically means you can see the enemy team. If I've ever seen you, that's currently three dead for Exertus. Xenex obviously doing the right thing here, trying to secure a flag. Now they're gonna, they might move this, then the camouflage is out. But when they toss this flag line, look, Septic is slaying in the flag. He's not going straight for the flag. That was a great kill there by Botan. Yeah, and swapping over to Botanus, excuse me, who's coming off of the respawn. Septic there went on at least a four kill spree, so fantastic job by him. You see Cinder there on the death cam. 
getting the recall for Exertus, so great job by him as his team are going to try and win this game. Guys, do not forget this is a best of five that Exertus needs to win. If, it, if Xenex win this best of five, the tournament will be over and they will be crowned victorious. But nobody wants to see that. We want to see as much Halo as possible. This is the first time in a very long time Halo has been on the main stage. You know, it gives us something to watch. Of course, the players themselves have not played on the main stage in a very long time, but look at the shots here. To Foxy is really not missing. Yeah, let's swap over to the uh, Xenex side. Unfortunately, Fusion there coming off the respawn. Bad time to swap over to him, but let's see what he can do coming off the respawn. And just a reminder, Xenex only need to one, win one best of five because they are coming in from the winner's bracket. Fusion then taken down straight away. Let's see what his teammate Septic can do, who's also on the respawn. Let's swap over to the Exertus side with a man who's finally alive. We have Cinder from Team Exertus. And this man, Adam, has been absolutely on fire this weekend. Cinder has always been the captain of previous teams. He was on Enigma at previous events and he's always led by example of course we have Boy who is the heart and soul of his team but look he's not one who's gonna wait he's gonna wait for his teammate for the flag this could be very well cap number one but wait Xenex not having that today someone on the plat immediately going for Hitterborg might not be able to get this oh my god it, oh Hitterborg that kills the flag player incredible flag cap there absolutely fantastic play by Hitterborg there a player from Xenex tried Touching the flag to make sure the uh, Exertus players could not capture the flag. Hitterbolt there, took down the player, returned the flag, and then put the flag in. But look, straight away, Xenex are going to answer back. And did we see this? Riot had camouflage and ran the flag top middle. That was such a key play. Now, they're going to know what time the camouflage is. Septic, unfortunately, missed a few shots there. But his teammate is good enough to clean this up. The game is tied again. Looking at the kill feed at the moment, two kills apiece for both teams as Septic takes down Hitterbolt there, who had that laser beam off death. And now Septic is controlling this side base so well. So important to control these side bases, Adam, because you have so many side lines. Of course, I mean, there's nothing you, that you cannot push off your plat or be top middle with someone in a side base. I mean, look how sneaky he's been right now. Unfortunately, Septic will need to reload, but he knows there's someone in bottom middle. And of course, he seems to have lost the player, but again, he's, he's got teammates to the side bases. He's putting good shots on, he's staying low while his teammates are in side bases. Currently, they have camo again. Now, will he go straight for the shotgun? Or it's going to get cleaned up, which would be a huge mistake. And that was a fantastic execution there from the Exertus side. Speaking of Exertus, let's swap over and see what Botanus is doing. Finding Fusion there, put some shots on him, and straight away he's in the Xenex flag to pull this flag out. This could very well be a successful flag run here for Team Exertus. And look, he has a player in the flag as well. This could very well be 2 1 here to Team Exertus. And yes, it is. Cinder puts that flag in for Exertus. Great pull there from Botanus. And not only was that a flag cap, not a single person on the Exertus was killed. I mean, every single person there, you know, they know exactly what they're doing. They put shots across the map. Rice is in their flag, but you know what? Botanus is going to get a side base because he knows he needs to do the right thing. And his teammate is running another flag. The camouflage is coming up in around 20 seconds. So watch the teams trying to go around the top middle of the map to control that power up. It is, of course, a passive power up. Comes up every one minute and 10 seconds bit. We're on board with Bossy at the moment, running this flag, gets it to his own side. But luckily for Xenex, there's a player to quell that flag run straight away. Of course, Xenex are no strangers to the game. They know how to use the balls, they know exactly where they're going to be. If you spot someone going for one, chances are they're going to go straight through. Not a lot of players come back after a direct four. But of course, here, Fusion is trying to stay alive. They're a bit rattled right now. It seems as if the Xertis, of course, as always exerting themselves and they're managed to get, I mean, they're, they're, they're not afraid right now. Botanus here has the camouflage, so five minutes into this game, it is 2-1. His team do have the lead, and he's going to try and maybe run a flag. No, I like this play from Botanus. He is just going to take care of this camouflage, make sure he gets his shields back and put this to good use. He does have that shotgun in his back pocket that he can use, and I like what he's doing here, just staying alive, getting his shields and taking care of that camouflage. Now that was terrific shots right there. He still has the camouflage. Now he's going to throw the flag out. He's probably going to try and stay alive. You know, you might for it. But it's, if he has people on his plat, this could be another cap. He's still using the camouflage. He might get this up, but unfortunately, he gets cleaned up. Looking across the board, it's going to be hitable. You see on your desk screen, he's moving this flag in. There is a Xenex player in their base, and that's going to be a maybe a recard for the Xenex side. I'm having a look. Fusion there just taken down as we swap over to him. Let's see what Cinder's doing on the Exertus side. Still, the flag has been returned for Xenex, but Exertus' flag is out currently as Xenex have possession. Now, hopefully you didn't hear there, as we have had earlier with listening, the French are getting very, very rowdy. You know, they're, they're bringing the passion back. They're not tired. They're not done. 
I mean, as you can see, he's Thunder pushing and he knows the flag's up for recovery. Maybe he's going to summon Dive upon it. He has to be careful here, but he does get the recovery. Two players dropping down. That's a death, but that is returning the flag back home. Exactly. A perfect death there from Cinder if there ever was one. Let's swap over back to the Xenex side. Mr. Scott Finley Fusion. He's going to be trying to put some shots on Renox in his own base. Gonna decide to double back here to his own base, making sure there aren't any Exertus players trying to push. So his team can push up clearly. Helping to Foxy here, put great shots there on Cinder, but Cinder gets away. Finds an already weak botanist there, so gonna be one dead here on the Exertus side. Bryce takes down Renox. Look at the kill feed. It's pretty much Xenex across the board, but now Exertus are starting to answer back with kills of their own. Fusion basically helped get three kills there for his team, but unfortunately they are now three dead. Riots is the only person alive he's currently at great. If he gets killed here, <laughs> then I still have to spell anything good for his team, because then his team can respond to get her in bulk and even push out. The French at the moment exerts are pushing the side bases. And as it stands, no one has calm at the moment. The game is quite even before they start to beat each other out. The game isn't too far out of reach from any team. Of course. Don't forget, if teams are tied at the 15 minute mark, we will be going to overtime. Next point win scenario. Cinder there did get the camouflage, but it's already set it for the Xenex side, who's going to be running a flag straight away, straight down the middle of the map. Finds two weak exertion players. If he gets that touch, that could be perfect. But perfect execution there from Bryant and his teammate to stop the exertion player before he put that flag in. Septic is going to throw the flag up, and that's going to be 2 2. We have a game in our hands here. The game is now 2 2. It seems as if Xenex, so, you, know, you know what, we've accepted your earlier match here. And we're going to retaliate. This is a team made of, you know, of course, European champions. A lot of titles between them. There are often people who are used to this situation. This now they've lost games and come back and won events. Now, it's the, the French here, you know, they're also they are not afraid in the slightest. But, you know, at the moment, it's all tied up. You can't tell who is the better team. One thing I've noticed from the Xenex side, <laughs> unfortunate grenade there from Septic. They do so well to stay alive. Let's see what Cinder can do on the Exertus side. He's, uh, his team are actually running a flag back to their own base. Cinder taking down. Let's see what Botanist is doing as he's throwing the flag out. This could be 3 2. Yes, it is. There's Renox with cat number three for Team Exertus. Botanist here thinking he's James Bond with the 9mm. They're trying to <laughs> make someone weak across the map. But look, <laughs> Xenex already moving another flag. They're moving across the plat. They're now from the top middle. If anyone can stop this, 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 this would be a huge. But at the same time, if they cap this, this eliminates any momentum just gathered by capping on one flag. Absolutely, and Septic has camouflage, so now Fusion scored the flag, making it 3-3, and now Septic has camouflage as well. He needs to get his shields back, keep that thing under control, gonna pick up that James Bond laser beam, that Sentinel beam there at bottom middle, and now he's gonna try and find some more of the Exertus players. There's Hitterborg getting a little bit leery, trying to challenge Septic with his camouflage. Of course, they're overextending to try and kill this camouflage player because he can do so much damage. I mean, Despite having this weapon put it before, it's pretty much the bat signal. You fire that gun, you light players up, but at the same time they know where you are. But he had camouflage, and it's a great combination because no one's gonna be able to find them. He's moving the flag, he still has camouflage. This is how important this is. Exactly, and you heard that you may or may not have heard the call out from Fusion 444. So that means Xenex are gonna be moving a flag. So the Exertus players very much need to stop this flag unless they <laughs> Unless they want to go 4-3 down, which I don't think they do. Looking across the board, can't see any players alive apart from Cinder on our point of view. And his team need to find their own flag and they need to recover that very soon. The team knows if Cinder actually didn't have the flag was. The reason for that is because Xenix actually hit the flag in the side. It's not on purpose, but to get the team's back. Now that's three dead currently. And for Xenix, they're going to get Camel and they could possibly the flag. There's only one person in the map right now shooting Renox and he gets the kill. But wait. There's no one back at the base yet, so this might be a dead flight. So let's swap over to the Xenex side, as Fusion here is going to try and recover his own flag. Hitterborg has thrown the flag in, looks as if Two Foxy had a jumping interception to return his own flag. Maybe Two Foxy there thinking he was playing Call of Duty, a bit of uplink there. Went for the interception, got the recov, and now Fusion and the boys can push up and try and get a flag capture of their own. Unfortunately, Hitterborg they're coming through. <laughs> Seems a teleporter of them. Seems to be, you know, nothing you can do when you go and there's basically a Rob Septic is standing on your ramp aiming at you. Now the control seems to be probably in the place at the moment of Zenex. They're killing all the players. I mean, in the moment, there's no one top middle, but at the same time, they're in it and underneath the base. Slaying battle here pretty much seems to be even across the board. We've seen uh, that in flag caps as well. Three flag caps apiece. I'd, I'd say the slaying has been pretty even as well. Both teams capitalizing from when they get three or four down for the other team. Remember, only four minutes left in this game. Once that timer in the bottom right hand corner of your screen 
goes down to 15 minutes. If the teams are tied, it will be a next point win scenario. Botanist there did get the camouflage but was taken down. We're still on the point of fusion, on the point of view of fusion as he has uh, a killing spree under his belt, getting assists left, right and center and now he's moving the flag. Uh, excuse me, Xenex have taken down a few of the Exertus players, but there's going to be a uh, Exertus player taking down the flag player there and getting the recoup. No, I just saw the, the recoup was eminent, and there's not a lot he could do in that position because someone poured it. At the I same time, at the moment. We, know, <laughs> we noticed that obviously someone was killed, we're back, man. someone was killed getting camel. There's only three camels left in this game, and we've noticed every time we've been a black cat, someone has been in control. Ripple Fantastic kill. triple here right now. Fusion might be able to pick up the overkill. Unfortunately, he's doing the right thing. He's going towards the flag to move the objective. And there's someone underneath his base. Fortunately, this one obviously determination he picks up this kill because the members have already spawned. Dead body there. He's not like giving them the heebie-jeebies. Someone front green. Putting shots. He's trying to stop the flag. But Fusion's slaying everything. He's standing on the flag. He's basically saying, if you spawn in front of me, you will be killed. So, big killing spree again there for Fusion. Finally taken down by this man right here. It's going to be Cinder taking down Fusion. But two killing sprees back to back there from Fusion. And did you see how quickly they pulled the flag out of the Xenex base after they uh, did get those kills? I love the efficiency, but Hitterboard was being a nuisance under the base and prevented that flag run. Let's go back to Mr. Scott Finley. Fusion as he's well known. Two minutes, 22 seconds left in regulation. It's currently 3-3 in the game. Yeah, so as we can tell, Fusion is someone not notoriously known for his objective play. He's known as the Sniper, Hail of Free, and obviously his like, raw slaying skill. Now he can just move the flag all the way across the base. Obviously aware that this player is beside him. That could have never echoed sneak up there by Exertus, but he's going to get his flag up. I don't think there's anyone there at the moment. It's quite septic. It's going to be Cinder on the recop there for Team Exertus, so fantastic by him. Finally goes down. Let's swap back over to the Xenex side. Septic again controlling a side base. We've seen it so much from him this weekend, just controlling a side base, being an absolute nuisance, putting shots down on two Xenex players, excuse me, two Exertus players. And now it is still 3-3 in the game. 1 minute 32 left in regulation. Quick reminder, Xenex only needs to win one best of five to close out this Halo 2 anniversary grand finals. And of course here, in the moment, it seems as if Xenex are consistently getting the flag back to the base, but Xerxes are not giving up. They're not laying down. They're consistently and constantly getting recalls. Now the thing is, they're getting outslayed. Maybe they're going to get a little bit down themselves, but at the same time, you know, Xenex are going to start getting frustrated. I mean, they've tried so hard several times, and they've not once capped the flag in the last four minutes. And there's only one minute remaining in regulation time, as Harry's pointed out several times. The next flag will cap, but hopefully we won't get to that stage. Botanist has been chased down here. If he picks up his kill, that'd be huge. But no, but that person needs to be cleaned up. Yeah, it is good enough. And they have the flag in their own base. It's going to be too foxy there. Diving for the recap. He does get it. So still 3-3 in the game. Let's swap. In fact, let's stay with Botanist coming off the respawn. 37 seconds left in regulation. But just a reminder, this is game number one of the first best of five of the grand finals here at Insomnia 54. We are coming at you live from the Coventry, uh, excuse me, from Coventry. United Kingdom and Botanist here is picking up assists left, right and centre. His Exertus team have come all the way from France for this tournament and they are putting on a show so far in the final. Lovely double there from Botanist, surely not a triple, runs out of ammo. Can he take out Septic? Renox puts the flag in with 10 seconds left. So Xenex needs to get a pull in the next 5 seconds, otherwise it will be game over. And Exertus need to There it is! Today. That's it, and it's done. Team Exertus take game number one, 4 3 on Warlord King of the Hill. You see the response there from Exertus. Very controlled, very calm and collected. They know they need to win two best of fives in order to seal out this Halo 2 anniversary grand finals. And who would call this? The game one go towards Exertus. I mean, everyone here is you know, saying, obviously, Xenex are going to run away with this. They're not going to drop a game. But, I mean, the friendship probably are happy to just be in this main stage and take apart some of Europe's finest. So here is the scoreboard here. And looking across the board, Cinder with 17 kills, but look at the assists. Three more assists than he had kills, but Hitterborg pretty much putting on a show. He had the most kills for his team across the board. Exertus actually got completely outslayed. Xenex there completely overslaying Exertus, but they did not come out with the win. I mean, we saw that, and it was easy to point out in the play. The amount of times we saw the flag going straight back, um, to his annexes base, but there was no way to cap because constantly exerters were just throwing themselves at the flag. And the amount of times they recovered the flag, 
despite the amount of deaths and managed to come back and win that game. I mean, all it takes is one good cap and one good play. And like you say, it is so hard to win Warlord caps with the flag when you are being outslayed that hard. So fantastic job there from Exertus taking game number one in this first best of five. Just a reminder, we are live from the Brico Arena in Coventry, United Kingdom. My name is Wonderboy. I'm joined by the wonderful AZ. Game number two, Exertus versus Xenix, is coming up very, very soon. We have Shrine Team Slayer for you. So snipers, rockets, good lore. Now, I'm going to ask you, out of the POVs that we have, who would you like to start with and why? I think it's got to be Botanist, because I think he's the only sniper that we have on screen. And I also think that you love that man. I love that man. Botanus is a beast. Botanus is a beast. I love Botanus. Oh, he's, he's the man. He, and also, you know, not only are these people, you know, they're, they're loyal, they're passionate, they have come this far, but they're also really nice. I mean, something that a lot of console players are not notoriously known for is being nice people. I mean, after they beat Epsilon and the loser bracket finals, they came over and they were happy. Yeah. They looked relieved because, you know, that's something they want to do. They don't come here to lose. No. Nobody comes to lose, but especially when you come from France, that's dedication. And we've spoken about it so much this weekend, but you just have to highlight that both the passion coupled with the individual talent of Exertus is, is a scary thing to behold because these men are probably the most individually talented players on the European Halo scene. Coupled with their passion and intensity, it's, it's just hard to overcome that. Of course it is. I mean, considering how pumped up and how fired up they are. I mean, you know, unfortunately, you know, people, they don't look. Your emotions show in video games. And after that game went down, I know it's like Fusion was shaking his head, he wasn't too happy, but at the same time, I mean, these players have experience to pick themselves up and say, you know, yeah, it's, it's one game, yeah, the series is not over, but something you don't want to happen is to get lazy and go, well, we do it, we can lose the series. Yeah. I mean, it's the same as we saw in the was bracket final with Epsilon, um, the French were kind of like, well, you know, we can lose this lockdown King game, yeah. but it's, you don't want that mindset to set in, you want to win every single game you want to close out. Absolutely. So game number two is coming up very, very shortly. Shrine Team Slayer. We have Xenex coming in as the winner's bracket final winners against Exertus. However, find themselves 1-0 down in this, in this the grand finals of the Halo 2 Anniversary European Championships sponsored by Astro here at Insomnia 54. So we're going to be kicking the game off straight away with this man right here. Botanus. He's going to grab the sniper for Exertus, and this man has been hitting some disgusting shots this weekend. Of course, he has. He's been given us a reason to pick him almost to stop every single shrine game purely because of how good he is as an individual. Now, he spots the player in the opposing hut, Pupil Carbine. Now, Xenix know that he's there. They're going to try and shut down straight away because if they kill him, they can manage to push the people in ring. The people in ring at the moment, I don't know who seems to have rockets or if they are indeed in play. Uh, last I saw, it was Renox with the rockets on the Exertus side, but oh! Base taken off there by two Foxy, and it's going to be septic for Team Xenex with the Rockets and Ring Control as he clears out Ring 2 there. It was hit a ball from the Exerter side as Xenex moved into a two kill lead, five to three. There's something you've noticed here is that Rob has Rockets to up a kill. Now, every time you jump up from a jump up or a window, you're pretty much going to be killed instantly. There's not a lot you can, especially if you get Ring 3. Now, you cannot get into our, our team's map or the street without having Ring Control. As soon as you go into Summon Street and they're Ring to Ring 3, you're going to get shot. That's wouldn't, common knowledge. Wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't swap over to Botanus here. He has the sniper back in play. Looking across our screens, no other power weapon. Shot to Foxy there. Maybe a bit of jitters. They are three kills down in this game. However, one game to the good in this, the grand finals of the Halo 2 Anniversary Championships here at Insomnia 54. Six kill lead now for Team Xenex, and they look to be galloping into a commanding lead. That's been cut down to just five now by Cinder. There's something that a lot of people, uh, people might know about this game type, is that it's not fair in the spawn system. You do not spawn at your side repeatedly. You can get split spawn, spawn opposite. Now that's something you noticed there. They didn't move off the side of the sniper. Um, because he, you know, he was watching his back in case someone did. Now, there is now a sniper in possession of Xenex, and there is a big lead. It's seven kills at the moment. Uh, Rob is obviously patrolling ring here. Now, well, he might try and go ring three to try and do something on the way But at the moment, the sniper, I believe, is still in the hands of a member of Xenex. So, like you said, Xenex have the uh, shotgun in the back pocket. Excuse me, Septic has the shotgun. He whips that out, tries to take down, I believe that was Botanus, who was getting a little bit leery there, try challenging Septic. Septic shooting just walls at the moment. I don't know, I'm already too sure what he's doing. He's finding a couple of players there from the Exertus boys. But look at the score in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. 14 to 6 in favour 
of Team Zenix. And this is the game type we haven't really seen a lot of this weekend. Not only because it's not a favorite game type, but at the same time, it's a game type where if a team can get top two, it can end really quickly. It's black in this game type quite a lot, where teams are just pushing each other, trying to rank control. But on this game type, there will become points of standoff moments where obviously teams don't want to lose their The French, of course, these teams just be pushing the line because they know they're good enough to pick up kills. Absolutely. It's a shame we don't have Wright's point of view because he seems to be going off with the sniper at the moment, to be honest with you, Adam. We've seen him so far this weekend already hit a killing frenzy, had his overkill stolen by Fusion which I was very, very angry at. But three minutes into the game, Xenex already have that seven point lead and they're gonna try and extend that as soon as possible. As Septic finds two players, could turn two here, make it a double, picks up the assist on Hitterborg instead. Xenex, after picking up my kill on Hitterborg, it's almost double the lead. And Rob has spotted members on the opposite flag. He's gonna need that. If he gets a hit mark, he knows there's someone there. At the same time, there you go. He knows someone's hiding between turret and flag. He's gonna tell his teammates he's watching his back. Notice that someone, I believe, Riot, is standing on at the flag. Maybe he has a sniper, maybe he doesn't, but the thing is he's watching spawns. If someone gets killed, great rocket player. If someone gets killed, then he's watching the back. Slender here trying to do something for his team. Being ring three, having someone written is a complete nuisance. It really is not only the high advantage, but also as you saw, Hitterbolt there just got lost in the lights pretty much. He, he was he was looking up and, and couldn't find a player as uh, Septic there did turn two and get a double kill, but it's still the lead in favour of Xenex, a nine-point lead now, four minutes into the game. Now of course they're gonna be a little bit deflated, no one seen the score, no one they're down by a fair amount, but listen, all they have to do is get like a sniper, get full weapon, like you have just now. That player, you know, in another day would have been killed too. And the thing is, the <laughs> Riots is now trash talking members of Exertus. Yeah, and that's not what you want because that man is massive. That man is at least seven foot tall. I swear his dad was probably a tree. That man is really tall as Fusion here is on a double kill. Might turn three, can't quite do so, but 13 kills, 14 kills now the lead for Team Xenex. They seem to be just galloping away with this game type. If you're Exertus right now, what are you thinking? You're thinking, I want that man who represents Groot, aka Riots, off one side of the map. Yep. He's standing purposely in a pair position, which he does notoriously. That's going to cause you a lot, of, a lot of headaches and a lot of trouble. Now, the score again is increasing in the as well. Of course, like, the individual talent is there on both sides, but the teamwork at the moment is in Zenex's favour. You've seen, for example, there, usually Fusion would sit behind the rock and let his teammate help him, like he did earlier. But the point is, maybe they're feeling a little bit confident, you know? They're like, oh, we're up by quite a lot of kills, we can give away deaths, but that's what people are making mistakes. And we've seen that on lockdown. Zenix's lockdown game this weekend has been pretty much on point. Whenever they, they get a sizable lead, they will happily play aggressively and play very fast. The lead cut down to just five now by Exertus, so fantastic job. That just shows how quickly the tide can change on this game type. Get across the board, there's her. Uh, could have been a double there for Fusion. Gets the assist instead. Going to be three down here on the Exertus side, and it's going to be the last alive. Cinder on ring three for his team. No, his team, he's on with his teammates. This becomes a point where they ask themselves, we are on the side of the map, Sniper may be coming up like any minute now, do we hold this side? But then Xenix, they don't seem to care, but like, you know what, we don't care what side you're on, we're gonna come straight at you. As you saw, not that progress on the can be. Go up here, have any individual skill to take him down. And then not, maybe even still on half shield, Rob is still alive. He is, yeah. And he's gonna be pushing into this base, trying to find a few of the Exertus players. Nine kill lead, I do believe, for Xenex at this moment in time. And they're looking pretty good for it. So there was a moment there where Exertus got within five, but at the moment it looks like Xenex are happy to just run away with it. Ten kill lead, make that 11 as Septic takes down Cinder on no shields. It's 12 now. This is just getting out of hand and it's getting out of the reach of the Exertus team. And you can tell, even the communication's gotten quiet for Exertus. That team and squad realizes maybe this game type isn't going to go in their favor. But at the same time, you know, they can you know, get their heads together and realize that you know, this game might be out of their reach. But at the same time, keep, keep your spirits up. Keep getting the kills, keep, keep staying warmed up. They don't think about it too much. But at the same time, as Xenex are enjoying this. They're just going to run through ranks and pick up kills. But this game is not over. No, it absolutely is not. And don't forget, Xenex only needing to win one best of five in this grand finals. But every game counts, and Septic here is going to pick up the rocket, so might even take out that player. Can't quite do that though, so looking across our, our screens, can't quite seem to see any power weapons in play. Let's swap over to Botanist from Team Exertus. His team are 12 kills down. At this moment in time, Adam, what do you need to do? You need to slow this game down, obviously, but if you're Exertus, what, what do you do? If you're Exertus, you say, we want to get 
few more kills could be the one to be given. Damn, a stick thinner. Yeah, that's the worst last thing you can do. If I were exerted, I'd be thinking about slowing the game down a lot. I mean, snipers do spawn inside the map, but it feels like they're trying to get the game over with as opposed to slowing the game and dragging it out. Because Xenix are in a position to control the tempo of the game, and they can have the game at their pace. But at the same time, they're scared. They have rank control, which is what they need to do. They're just getting cleaned up consistently. Yeah, as soon as Exertus there had rank control, Xenex were very, very quick in shutting them down as Cinder here is going to come off the respawn and, and Ring Control have played a massive part in this game. We have had Riot sit on one side of the map for most of the game, but Ring Control has been, been pretty much dominated by Septic and 2 Foxy most of this game and you see again there a Xenex player in Ring just preventing Cinder from pushing in. But did you see how committed that was? The pit, 2 Foxy called him out and shot by two members immediately. No, they have rank control. That was one of the best plays I have ever seen. They toss into ring, literally in your face. And of course, they're still in ring. Body is one shot trying to get away, but it's just four kills away now from Xenex. Yeah, three kills needed. Don't forget, on Team Slayer, you need to get to that 50 point mark. The first team who does so will win the game. And Xenex only three points away from doing so. Speaking of Xenex, let's swap over to the Xenex side. Let's go over to Fusion. See what he's doing as the game has slowed down considerably. Fusion here is trying to speed speed it up a little bit, but I believe there's a sniper on the exer the exerted side. Barn is picking up a kill, but as it stands, it's like they're only three points away, and at this point in time, you can't see them throwing that. Away. Something I noticed there was the riots and two foxy both pushed their jump up, trying to pick up the kills and listen to the call. It obviously Fusion made people weak in slate ramp, and they poked out. Both of them were killed. Now it seems as if Exertus are, you know, they're just, you know, they know what they're doing. And look, wait a minute, someone has spawned behind Fusion, he gets cleaned up. This player needs to stay alive or he's literally going to lose the game. It's Cinder here who has uh, an 8 point deficit to overcome. Unfortunately goes down to the hands of two Foxy. You see Botanus there on the death screen. Hitterbolt picks up a double. That could be quite big for his team if Botanus can stay alive. Let's swap over to Botanus from France. Uh, he's getting drilled here and that will be the 50th kill of the game. So Xenex take game number two, tying up the series one to one. That was good play there. I mean, at the same time, when you're in the next position, it's not a bad thing to just rush the other team. No. And of course, in that position there, the Zerter player, the Zerter player had to shoot. I mean, he couldn't just watch you know, his teammates being shot by, obviously, one of the best players in Europe future. Yeah, he, he, done, he done the right thing. So I'm anxious to see the scoreboard here as it looks as if uh, Two Foxy from Team Xenex put on a stellar performance. And again, Septic. We highlighted Two Foxy and Septic from the uh, from the Xenex side. They were pretty much the people who were controlling Ring, and, and it shows in their stats. Perfect performance from them. Indeed, I mean, what, there wasn't too many plays in terms of sniper. It was a lot more team based. Okay, there was a lot more teamwork, and there was a lot of Ring control. At the start of the game, it seemed as if Xenex were the ones with Rocket, and they seemed to know what they were doing. Yeah, absolutely. On the exerter side, you've got to look at Botanus there, only showing seven kills. He is very individually talented, but a poor game from him that time. Renox, unfortunately, don't have his point of view, but I've heard he was hitting some, some very, very good snipes that game. But going into game number three, it's all tied up in this first best of five in the grand finals of Insomnia 54. It is Xenix 1, Exertus 1. And at the moment, it's going to be Lockdown Ball, which is a game type we haven't seen too much of. Yep. We have seen Insight with some very nerdy spots. Oh, um, yes. Snake. Shout out to Snakey, by the way. That man <laughs> has showed me spots I have never seen. But this is a game type that I reckon Xenex have been doing pretty well about. Um, who do you want to start this game with? It's got to be someone from the Xenex side after they took that uh, that game number two. I think I think the momentum is very much in their court. They know they only have to win one best of five here at the Grand Finals. And I think if they win this one, it could very much be all over. It could be at the same time as uh, Blackjack mentioned earlier, is that the French are very emotional people. They're very passionate. But the thing is, it's good when you're, you know, having a, a winning game in a series and you get that pumped up and get that, you know, animated. But at the same time, when you lose a series or you go down a game, it can also come back in a negative form. Yeah, it absolutely can. So going into game number three, all tied up in the series score, one to one, is going to be Exertus facing off yet again against Zenex on Oddball on lockdown. And you give Septic some love? We most certainly are. We're going to start things off with Septic from Team Zenex. His team is going to be spawning, of course, in the library because, uh, because his team are red team, so that's where they spawn. Of course, got to give a massive shout out to our sponsors here at the Halo 2 Anniversary Land Championships. 
Astro Gaming UK provided us with some fantastic headsets. Make sure you buy their products. I love Astro. I have had Astro since the start of MLG. It's very much the best headset I've ever had. A little bit of this game here. Septic is moved his way towards Sniper. I've almost created shots here, but the French are in possession of the ball. Uh, I've not seen too many spots over at Snipe's side. The stalactites almost killing Fusion now. If you shoot them, you pretty much can get a guaranteed kill if it lands on top of you. Um, it seems to be there's a lot of pressure going on towards SP, but no, no member of Exeritus has been killed yet. But Vice is pushing straight in. The push is here. Fusion walked past the Sniper rifle. Notice he didn't pick it up. Yeah. For reasons, he's pushing towards the team. He doesn't want to go back. He's putting good shots here, but someone has to relay that call out and grab that sniper. Fantastic maturity shown there by Fusion in order to run past the sniper rifle and go for the objective piece instead. And now they're going to try and cut into this 30 point odd lead in favour of Exertus. Fusion on your point of view. Looking across the board, can't see any power weapons in play for either team and it's going to be this man right here making a push underneath with his teammate Renox. He needs to push up to Fusion who's holding that objective piece but gets sliced in the back there by Riot. Renox also going down so great job there from Xenex for slaying out. Now bear in mind that obviously Xenex have the ball and been playing pretty well but they've only just taken the lead. And look at the rotation. Exertix had 30 seconds that rotation is literally just as old school as it gets. Having the ball in the window and hold it in good positions. Now, I'm not too sure if you know about the spot that Snakey has used and several teams have used since the event's been out, but he's just got a ball hog. This is a medal you don't see every day. It has to be this man from the Exerter side who has that Ogre 1 combo sniper and sword in possession. But he needs to, he can't sit here, man. He needs to start popping some faces or he has to move because his team right now are currently down by 30 seconds and that lead for Xenex is only growing. Now, he, he did hit the nose scope there on the person, uh, BR3. He gets cleaned up. Now, the person's been killed. You need to make the push towards the ball carrier. Or else, you know, this lead's going to increase. It's already doubled, but the ball ball has now been played. Or is that BR1? No, it's been played. Well, Great believe, kill there. I believe it's BR1, actually, Adam. It's still BR1 here. Wasn't it it the certainly map. is, yeah. But swapping back over to Cinder. He has Snipe and Sword back in possession. Finally gets taken down there. Let's swap over to Fusion, see what he's doing. He was the man getting most of the full time. Swap over to Septic. He's the man getting the ball time now for Zenich. Great play there. Before he was back smacked, manages to throw the ball off of the map and resets it to top middle. Now, Big Daddy Rights here again has his name break. Unfortunately, we don't have his QB, but we can tell he's ripping faces off. Maybe someone on the other team will want to take him down straight away. He's still SP, but the spawn has been called out in library, which Rob Septic has ready for it. He's been shot. So that player is going to try and go top middle, but be taken out. Fantastic beat down there. Rob knowing what he's doing. The Stalactites help kill the ball carrier. This could be three dead here. Rob is off the map. That's probably on his way to America. That, <laughs> that is not what we want to see, of course. We have to give a massive shout out to Septic, who is, of course, moving over to America to compete in the HCS Season 2. So we wish him the very best of luck. But his team, as it stands in this Grand Finals, all tied up 1-1 one one in game score. And his team currently leading by a good chunk of time against this Exertus team. No power weapons in play throughout our points of view. But earlier we saw Bryce with the sniper rifle, and he, he's been having the tournament of his life pretty much this weekend. He's had one of his one of his better tournaments. I mean, it's been said that people haven't played as much, haven't performed, but Bryce is definitely someone who has turned up and played consistently. It's not just about having a good play, the odd overkill, the odd frenzy, it's about playing consistently. Fusion having great shots here, telling Cinder to, let's go, this is his library. You know, he can come in if he wants, but he's gonna get swiftly removed. Yeah. So, Fusion here again with the ball, 60 seconds over a minute, the lead now for Xenex, and that lead's only grown with this fantastic Xenex uh, setup. Again, you see the ball, ball holder medal there pop up on the screen. I want to highlight the spot that Septic is sitting in right now. In fact, he just moved. He was using a little blind spot on open route that not many people know about. But he's currently patrolling BR3, making sure none of the Exertus players push underneath or over the top to Fusion, who is holding that ball and getting the majority of that ball time. And Fusion obviously using the map to his name, saying lock it down. He's still, he's got another medal while holding his ball because players like Septic, Two Foxy, and Riot are all over the map. They are pinning down Exertus. There's not a lot that can happen. The ball does eventually get another. There's a player with a sniper rifle on Exertus looking at Rob as we speak. Botanus is watching his back because obviously he's very aware that where the ball is, you usually spawn off the end of the map. Um, at the moment, it seems his teammates spawn here, but the ball is still alive. There should be a kill here. The ball should go off the map and reset. But apparently, it's not, it's not playing ball. There it is. It's, it's played ball. ball. It's finally starting to play ball. Tries to take down two Foxy there, but two Foxy's going to say no. He's going to pick up the sniper rifle. 
Can't see a sword in play whatsoever. Let's see who, uh, what Septic is going to be doing here on the open ramp. His team have the ball and a massive, massive lead. It's hard to come back from this. Not impossible, but it is hard for the Xenex side, especially when Septic, excuse me, the Exerter side, especially when Septic is making plays like that, getting a last second stick on the sword carrier. Obviously, the player there who killed Septic had the sword, was in prime position to kill the ball, could come up behind him with the sword, but Rob using his LT to maximum effect, clean up the player. Even his position here, he didn't kill the player, but he knows there is a player S1 trying to jump up. That, unfortunately, is giving yourself an easy death towards the enemy. But they're doing the right thing. They're up triple the amount of time the Xerxes have. That's absolutely crazy, especially to see it here in this uh, in this grand finals. Uh, as we swap over to Fusion here from the Xenex side, his team, as you said, have four times the amount of ball time of the opposition. Don't forget, it is the first to 200 points here on lockdown for Fusion completely melted by the team shot and it's this man we're going to swap over to, Cinder, who's on a killing spree. No, Cinder needs to look at his team and say, you know what boys, we need to wake up. This is the grand final. You know, if you start going down another game, it might be too far to come back from. I mean, he knows this. They all know this. This is something that they came all this way for. They didn't come to this now. They're in a good position. Balls in library. They have a guy top blue and a guy PR free. This should be a good setup. They can only come from top middle and bottom middle. Do you have perfect eyes everywhere? You should not be giving away any deaths. But this man, Fusion, has the sniper rifle. With that ball, this decides to rotate up to BR3. You see that Septic's getting boosted up by his teammates, but Fusion still with sniper in hand, needs to try and start popping some bases. But you see, here comes the Xenex push, but look at the kill feed. Three Exertus kills. So Fusion here, the last alive for Xenex, needs to start popping some shots with this sniper. Now at the same time here, Fusion, you know, as much as he can push up middle, expose himself. His teammates just get killed. He can push by himself. There are four members of the other team staring at him and watching him and locking him down. That was almost a tasty quick scope there. They still know he's alive, but at the same time, they don't need to poke out. The <laughs> Exertus have the ball in library. It shows how dominant a position this is, but Rise here on BR3. No doubt it's going to cause a lot of headaches for anyone patrolling. Fusion hopefully should be able to beat him. Oh, this is that headshot. Just oh, better. Yeah. And the you look at the kill feed constantly, Adam. Exertus kills across the board, so they most certainly can come back in this game. Exertus very much in, uh, in possession of the ball at the moment, and they are coming back into this game. And here's the man who's doing so, Botanus. They are getting kills across the board, and they are absolutely holding this ball and getting right back into this game. So time and time again, we've seen how dominant this position is. They're only 50 seconds down. That's not that far, you know, far to go. But here, Xenex are pushing in. The sword is very quick. There's already members to back up. That is, is it three dead again? The four, A4D right now is all four down. And Botanus has sword in hand as well as the ball decides to drop the ball for his teammates. In fact, no, he's going he's gonna to hold it for a little second, wonder whether or not he might swap this out. He does have the sword in his back pocket, finally picks up a BR. I was going to highlight that, but he's getting the ball as well. Bit of juggling going on between the Exertus players, but now they're right back at getting time, and that lead has been completely cut down from the Xenex players, and the push needs to come very soon. I think they were tired of having the chocolate butter to me, to you, to me, to you, but it seems that Xenex are just pushing library. That was a miss oh. by the sword. That could be so costly as the ball is still in the possession but it's now in the possession of Xenex probably the best thing they can do is get the ball either off the map but it seems they have control of VR tower and I don't think there's anyone in no one is in position to stop it. oh my goodness fantastic headshot there from Fusion on the Xenex side it looks like it's only going to be 30 points near enough for Xenex to close out this game Exertus still find themselves down by around 50 points so at this moment in time it's, it's pretty hard it's going to be pretty hard for Exertus to try and break this setup. up and, and what do they need to do in order to do so? It's hard to do so when Fusion is hitting sword kills like that, but the weapons have exchanged hands over into this man. What do they need to do to break this setup and come back into this game? Well, first of all, Fusion ended up going from library, unfortunately, it's there, moving from library to S3. Now, of course, yeah, you can sleep people with blue, but he needs to watch his back, especially with sword and sniper combo. You can pretty much dominate our team. Now you've basically given the French now have snipers set up, snipe and sword. So the ball gets played here. <coughs> oh, a huge play there, going both weapons off the map. The ball has been reset, but this is something these guys need to respond to. They need to get on this ball. They need to know that there's not too much time left in this game. And look at how quickly Septic from Team Xenex is on the ball. They know they only need 10 points to win this game. Septic surely could close out game number three right here, only five points away from close closing out game number three. The Exertus pressure is coming, but Septic closes out game number three. 200 to 146.
So Zenex galloping into a 2-1 lead here in the grand finals. And that was a lot of discipline there shown by Zenex. The fact they didn't let the game slip away. A lot of teams maybe would have faltered, not knowing what to do in that situation, but they literally charged through and they were able to you know, take command. I would love to see the scoreboard if we could, Adam, because I want to see how badly Zenex slayed them. Because there, was a, there were moments in that game when, when Zenex went off. Looking at the kill feed at the moment, it's two Foxy with 20 kills. Septic and Fusion only had 18 between them. So pretty much two Foxy there being the main slayer for his team. And Fusion are having, um, he had the most ball time. I mean, I never thought I'd see the day where it was a final for Fusion. You know, holding the ball, but obviously he has very skilled individual teammates on his side. I mean, we saw him holding the ball, he had riots into Foxy all over it. Rob was beautiful free using sneaky ledges, and that's very hard to put down. Because every time you take down a player, they react to it. And they've been through the situation several times. The French, not getting out slain too badly, but at the same time, it's not about objective. Oh, it's not, it's not about slides. It's about objective. Of course, coming out with the W is all that matters. And Exertus, unfortunately, did not do that in game number three. So going into game number four, which is going to be capture the flag on Shrine. Exertus need to win. Otherwise, it will be all she wrote. Zenex will be the champions. This could literally be curtains if the French don't pull their socks together. I mean, they need to realize this. They need to grab all their energy. It's been a long day for them. It's been a long day for all of us. Of course, yeah. One thing I have noticed, though, the Exertus, the French Exertus team have, have barely shown any energy here in the Grand Finals. They've not been as loud. They've not been as enthusiastic and as passionate as they have been in previous games. And maybe that's contributing towards the series score. I mean, I've always said about when you travel to events, when Europeans have traveled to America, vice versa, there is, there is you know, jet lag. And there is, you do feel tired in general if you travel far. Um, no, and it's, it's nothing you can come over, you just need to stay hydrated and stay positive. And, but the mindsets of the French, we've been shown so far, especially against Epsilon, you know, they're shown that they do have the men mentality and the maturity. Yeah, they most certainly do. So, game number four is going to be capture the flag on Shrine. Any predictions? How do you think this one's going to go down? I'm not necessarily talking score, I'm, t I'm talking method. How is this going to go down? I reckon we saw Xenex playing this before and they were a little bit slower at the start. Trying to look because the French are going to be naturally more aggressive to try and take advantage of the fact that they need this game. They need rain, they need rockets. But it seems, you know, it's the same setup as last time. Bonus again as a sniper rifle, he's trying to scope up people. That's a great headshot there against Fusion. Now, two Foxy will know he is on the main ramp side with the flag. They're going to try and pick rockets. Another great kill here. That's two down. They need to pick up, they need to get right, they need to get those rockets. Yeah, absolutely, and fantastic job here by Botanus picking up the sniper straight away. There's a headshot on Septic. Fantastic job by Botanus. Three kills so far, straight off the bat with this sniper rifle. Just 30 seconds into the game, he already has three kills with that thing, so great job by him. His teammates are pushing across the map, but Botanus, the furthest back for his team, using that long way snipe at uh, to good effect, already taking down three of the Xenex players, but Boston is here, forced to retreat. Now just off screen there, we saw a member of Exertus ring feed taking out people in rocks. Now they're going to probably spawn under turret side, maybe on flight, but Botanus, he's, here's a call out, someone on his S2, but he wants the idea to get ring free and start looking at people spawning and pushing to ring. Because we all know, the amount of times, unfortunately, here, unfortunately, doesn't get anywhere near that shot. But he's gave me the call out someone that's under his turret and hopefully a player on his team reacts. Yeah, I'm not sure who that was on the Zenex side. In fact, it was Riots who managed to get behind the uh, Exertus team and did so, so well in order to make Botanus turn around. And then another player, I believe it was Septic, maybe could have been too foxy as well, push over to the side and take down Botanus. But here is Septic. He's in the Exertus base. Just over one and a half minutes gone into this game. Septic picking himself up a double kill. Double kill and the flag is already being run by Team Zenex. Now this is less than two minutes into the game and we already have a potential flag gap. Of course members of Exertus realizing this flag's perhaps out of their reach. They need to get the people off their side. You still have two Foxy on, in your hut. You have Rob on your main ramp shooting you. You need to get these people off your map. So, first flag cap on the ball there from TCM Riots. Excuse me, that should be Xenex Riots. I don't know why his game attack is still like that. Come on, man. Represent Xenex. Fusion's doing that. So, let's swap over to the Exerter side. Here is Botanus, his team. 1-0 down in the game. Early on, they need to come back into this game and get a flag catcher off their own. Now, they need to realize that this is it. This is do or die. There's no more second chances. You will be going home tonight, either second or first. Now, he's putting good shots here. Riots is smart enough to stay alive and call him out. He gets cleaned up there by great bait play and someone's pushing pillars. Now Cinder is trying to take care of two people on his side. There's not a lot he can do. They are currently free down. And it's just not happening for the Exerta side at the moment. They find themselves 1-0 down.
triple kill here for Fusion. Already slaying spawners. It's hard to... It's so hard to stop this blackout when you have Fusion on your side with a killing spree identical to Septic. He just stays behind you and shoots you in the back. You need to get him out of your base. And it's so hard to do so to stop, stop the flag running at the same time. You can't do two things at once, so you have to choose. It's as if this is something straight from a training ground. Things that you have practiced in the past. Leave someone on the main ramp, maybe get someone on the street. Because of course, of course, our team. But look, Pontus here. He's trying to get on his side. His team's trying to get up. But this cab might go in here by Fusion. Just taken out there by an Exertus player, but it will be pretty hard. But I think uh, Zenix would be pretty hard done by to not capture this flag, but it could very well be a clutch stop here. Septic, the only player in position to touch this flag, could very well be a clutch reset there from Exertus. Very much still in this game. Good stop by them because. 2-0 down is so much harder to come back from than 1-0 down. And there was a member of, of, of Zenex, sorry, on their side. It's Fusion. He's running around. The team have called him out, which means they're now all coming back to try and stop him. He's going to be in front of the flag. This flag can also be reset. If he picks up his kill, that was a terrific play. That was huge there from Fusion, stopping the flag touch. That was a very, very great play. Got the killjoy as well, so preventing a player to get from getting even more warm in this game. So don't forget, if the teams are tied at the 15 minute mark, we will be going to overtime. But as it stands, Zenex are going to close out this game. And they will, of course, be crowned the champions of the Astro Gaming Halo 2 Anniversary Championships here at Insomnia 54. Now, of course, this team, Xanax, want to get this done with. They want to go home and get crowned. That's exactly what they're here for. They don't want to play another series. They want, you know, they want to get this done as fast as possible. Fusion here get cleaned up. But knowing there's someone on the pillar, he's been called out. There's only two members alive for Xanax at the moment. But look, a member of Xerxes just picked up rockets. But Fusion spotted him on the death camp. He's just literally being spawn killed. And there seems to be three people in his car. And the last member alive is indeed in hub. And the bottom is the only player alive we have on our points of view at the moment. And hey, look what he's got in his back pocket. He has those rockets in his hand. And so he can pretty much solidify ring control for his team here. And that's been so vital for the Exerted side this weekend. We've seen Botanus, Greenox just take control of those rockets and lock down ring, allowing Hitterborg and Cinder to move in behind enemy bases. As you can see here on top of the turret, the rockets being put to full effect. Unfortunately, that was a terrific rocket. He still has one left remaining, and that was a double kill. So they're gonna have to watch it for this one at rock. That was a uh, quick rocket. Went to pick up the kill straight away. But this flag needs to be moved, but he realizes he needs to switch across. Because straight away, the switch spawns are going to switch. It's going to be at turret side. One thing that Xenex have done so well is getting a player out of their own base, whether it be through spawns or just through movement, to stop the flag run early from Exertus, allowing spawners to get back onto the map. And the last alive I've, on our points of view here will be Cinder from Team Exertus. And his team needs to get a flag cap by the 15 minute mark. Otherwise, Xenex will be taking the game and this first and probably final best of five here at the Insomnia 54 Astro Gaming Halo 2 Anniversary Finals. Now, Boy here is going to be the first person forward if Hitterborg comes back. Fortunately, he's going to be too foxy. Too foxy is not happy. He does not want to play this game any more than he has to. He wants to put this to bed. He wants to go his own bed, and he wants to walk away with a big, nice check. Now, Septic is sneaking the flag. I hope the other team can't hear us, <laughs> but he <laughs> has it in the shotgun. He's dropped it. The enemy team now know exactly where it is, but the thing is, they now have to come back, and they're turning focus on him. There's now three, so make that two members of the Exertus looking for Septic while his teammates are pushing up. I love the use of the binoculars there from Septic. That's an old-school play. Lovely grenades there to take down Botanus, who was trying to do that sneaky jump. But again, Zenex moving the flag. They have two players in range and Septic here, quelling the push here from Exertus, and, and Septic is doing what he does best, staying on the Exertus side while his team are moving the flag, and just getting kills left, right, and center. There's the double kill as Two Fox, he puts the flag in, almost the triple, but oh no, he was just taken down by Hitterborg. A fortunate there for Septic. Let's swap over the Cinder from Exertus. I was also going to say that Septic is loving the fact he was getting kill after kill after kill, due to his great placement on the map, but they're fortunately getting cleaned up ring too. But that's, you know, he's going to be able to shake that off because he knows his team is too up, there's not too much time left. I was about to say, he'll be happy with dying there because his team put the flag in and they're one flag capture closer to closing out this grand finals and that's exactly what Septic cares about. He doesn't care about the individual plays, he cares about that check at the end of it. And another member there of Xenex, the great play there. Fusion is again consistently on their side being a pain in the backside. 
the waterfall being shot there so they can hopefully move this flag without members of Rock seeing them. They're pushing that now, this is great play here. This could be the last and final one. Yeah, this could be it from Exertus unless they, unless they pull something out of the bag. One thing I will say is that Shrine capture the flag is first to three flag caps, but the flag is not touch return. So let's swap over to Septic from Team ZX, who's going to try and move that flag as far as possible. In fact, no, he goes down. So let's swap over to Botanus, who's going to try and protect his own flag and keep his team in this game and in the tournament. And to Foxy there running away, he could have desperated it and dived upon the flag, but he has a sniper rifle. He knows that this game still can go towards this fight. Exertus, even just rockets, you missed that off stream. That was a phenomenal 180 rocket to the face. But the thing is, they have just lost rockets, and I'm pretty sure is that free dead? Free dead for Exertus? Yeah, it may well be, but look at Botanus here. He's the last alive for the Exertus team, but look at where he is. He's, he's on the uh, Xenex side. Great execution there from Xenex, though, knowing there was a player behind them, didn't allow them to push up. So now let's swap over to Septic from the, uh, the Xenex side, who's already moving a flag. They had killed Botanus on their own side, gotten a few more kills, and now the flag is already being moved. Obviously, the Xenex shown that they can indeed count to four. Realize we're still a player who is still alive and more than likely on their side. Now, there's great kills here. This again is a very good flag run. If he can get it into ring, possibly into his carbine. But I think they know, yes, they know exactly where the flag is. But Confusion is running the flag. He has a member out of his team spawning in his base. They've shot the waterfall. If he gets us into the ramp, this could literally be curtains. He has help from Septic, who is in the base watching over him. He needs to get a few more kills before getting in touch. I think it's going to be Bryce. That's going to be the last play alive for Exertus going down. So this surely must be your grand finals champions, the Insomnia 54 Astro Gaming Halo 2 Anniversary Champions, Team Zenex. So a massive congratulations to Fusion, to Foxy, Riots and of course Septic who go home as the victors of the Astro Gaming Halo 2 Anniversary Championships here at Insomnia 54 and of course commiserations to Cinder, Botanus, Renox and Hitterborg who go home as your runners up. Of course, I mean, no, you know, not a bad thing can be said about the French. They came here, they gave us a show. It was know. a Cinderella story. <laughs> a Cinderella story? Oh, that was poor. <laughs> that was, even for my standards, that was bad. <laughs> and uh, even looking from the stats from my game, you can't really see it off screen at the moment, but the game was pretty much every single member uh, going positive for Xenex. Yeah, just winning a slang battle, pretty much. Yes, pretty much. And the scoreline being 3 0 does not represent the fact that Xerxes did put a lot into that game. They were a fantastic team. They were a fantastic addition to this Halo 2 anniversary tournament here at Insomnia 54. But they just did just look completely drained in, the, in those last couple of games, especially that lockdown game and, of course, the final Shrine game as well. They just looked completely drained, out of energy. They did give a lot, a lot of energy this weekend. Of course, I mean, they showed against Epsilon and it is as if they gave it their all. But they still gave us a show. They still did themselves proud. And um, of course, they did France proud. Of course, they, they took down Epsilon, pretty much one of the top UK teams. They were UK juggernauts. They came in, took them down, not once, but twice in the bracket, I do believe, if I'm not mistaken. So fantastic job by Exercis. They can be proud of their performance here at the Insomnia 54 Championships. Of course, I mean, you know, big players, buck 20, buck 20, buck 57 players who ideally, they don't want to come for it. They expect to be in no. the final. And, you know, the French deservedly came here. They put in the practice, they turned up, and they had extreme dedication. And their passion was something that was really nice to see. Oh, yeah, it really was. And, and we've, we've harked on about it so much this weekend. But combined with their individual talent, their passion was pretty much unmatched by any team they faced. But unfortunately, Xenex were just compl a complete different class here for Exercise. They did win game number one, but Xenex then went on to take the next three games to win this first and only best of five here in the Grand Finals. So, we're going to go to a quick break, I do believe. Please stay here. We'll have... Oh, excuse me. We'll be going to the stage. We have an interview... Uh, excuse me. We No, we have Toucher on the stage. I'm all kinds of mixed up. It's so very late here. Thank you very much for tuning in. Over to you. Thank you very much, guys. That was the last final here on the Insomnia 54 stage, unfortunately. Thank you all for showing up in the crowd, but an amazing series of games, and it's time to give out some more horrendously oversized checks. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you can make your way up to the stage, please. Your second place team, it is Exertus.
Take the check, look at the camera and smile. <laughs> All right, one more time for Exertus. And, ladies and gentlemen, your Halo 2 Anniversary Insomnia 54 Champions, it is Team Zenex! <laughs> Giant check and smile at the camera. These are your champions, ladies and gentlemen. And unfortunately, sorry, <laughs> go ahead. That unfortunately does bring our broadcast here at the eSports stage to an end. We have had all our finals, some amazing games. We got pushed back a bit due to some incredible series that we had some incredibly close games, but we are finally done here. Tomorrow, there will be the broadcast of the closing ceremony, but for now, we are done here. Join us next time, though, for I-55 for more esports here from Insomnia at the Rico Arena in Coventry.